Shalom Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live, and uh, I don't really get too much in the uh, the election of the United States very much. Uh, I know there's been a lot going on. I mean, we do speak of it when we're dealing with Russia, the Middle East, and the things like that, and uh, looking at, uh, you know, the different tensions, and as far as uh, Hillary Clinton and, you know, bringing about war with Russia if she becomes uh, elected president. But a lot of stuff we kind of don't get deep into because we're so busy with the Middle East, with the uh, Eastern Europe and the, and the actions that are going on here. But I just happened to, to click into Twitter here and this video came up. It's from a guy named James O'Keefe uh, with the uh, Veritas uh, Project uh, or Project Veritas. Uh, you can actually pull him up. Uh, I'm assuming if I've got this right, I went to the website. Uh, and then I just clicked in his name, James O'Keefe, and it came up with this particular YouTube account called Project Veritas Action. And I know on another video he released uh, six days ago, it's been over a million views. But on this one right here, Rigging the Election, um, I watched this video here, and they did an a undercover operation there exposing uh, what the DNC is doing in behind the, uh, behind the scenes here. And it's very, very eye-opening. And I want you to be able to hear this yourself. And let me make sure we have the volume turned up back here on the main screen here. Uh, because we're going to play part of what we have here. We're going to basically pick up on the video. It's a 16-minute long video. We're going to pick up from the 7-minute mark to the 11-minute mark. Because it's going to give you two different perspectives of what is happening here in the background. And I want you to be able to hear what is actually said what these people were doing that's part of uh, the campaign operation about starting violence uh, against uh, uh, the, the different uh, people that are there in support of Donald Trump and just exactly how they were running their campaign. Take a listen to this here. Let's, let's go right into it right now. The actual campaign and the actual DNC and what we're doing. There's a double blind there. No. So they can plausibly deny that they didn't know anything about it. Scott Fovel is Kramer's attack dog. Fovel and his people train the agitators to go to Trump rallies, and nothing is left to chance. There's a script. Oh, there is a script. There's a script. Okay. There's a script of engagement. Sometimes the crazies bite, and sometimes the crazies don't bite. They're starting confrontations in the line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? They're not starting confrontations the in the rally, because once they're inside the rally, they're under Secret Service's control. When they're outside the rally, mm -hmm. they're more affected out. They're harder to get in. The media will cover it no matter where it happens. I assume it's always in the rally. Initiating the conflict by having leading conversations with people who are naturally psychotic. Okay, I mean, honestly, it is not hard to get some of these assholes to pop off. Right. It's, it's a matter of showing up to want to get into the rally in a Planned Parenthood t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, uh, Trump is a Nazi. You know, you, you, can, you can message to draw them out mm -hmm. and draw them to punch you. Fovel boasts about the extent of his network of operatives. So here, you have a schedule of events. Mm -hmm. We update this on an ongoing, rolling basis every morning. Mm -hmm. Those are all okay. the Trump appearances. These are all the Trump wow. and Pence appearances. Tomorrow, for instance, we are turning out 500 people in front of the Trump International in D.C. We have to have people prepared to go wherever these events are, which means we have to have a central kind of agitator training. Yep. Now, we have a built-in group of people in New York who do this. Okay. We have a built-in group of people in D.C. who do this. I was going to say, are they, are they localized? We have a group of people in Vegas. We have a group of people... Now, what's interesting is they're saying they have groups of people that actually go out and interfere in these rallies. Uh, he spoke about it being a group in Vegas, they have a group in Colorado, they have a group in Minneapolis that do this. Now, mind you, as we're looking at this, and I, I saw just a moment ago, uh, I don't know how well you can see this on your screen, they're actually putting the subtitles up there for you. But um, do keep in mind, they, they, he mentioned about they put on the shirts like uh, Trump is a Nazi or uh, something about uh, Planned Parenthood. 
He said this way they get the people to react. So in all fairness, we also have to keep in mind this is similar to what is being done at some of Hillary's rallies where you see uh, people coming in, uh, especially like in the case of InfoWars. Uh, we know that they'll, they'll go there and wear the t-shirt, uh, Bill Clinton rapist. So it is done back and forth as far as that, but this is the first time we've actually seen, at least I've actually seen, where someone goes undercover to try to expose what's happening here. So let's listen to a little bit more of what happens. The next part they're going to get into is very interesting because we go into a couple of people that are not supposed to be known about the operations that they're doing for the DNC. In Colorado, we're with the people in Minneapolis. So I'm uh, basically deputy rapid response director for the DNC for all things Trump on the ground. This guy is Aaron Black. He works full time for Creamer at Democracy Partners. He directs the spontaneous protests at Trump and Pence events. His real name is actually Aaron Minter. We don't know why he uses the name Black. Nobody's really supposed to know about me. <laughs> so the Chicago protest. When they shut all that, that was us. It was more him than me, but none of okay. this is supposed to come back to us because we want it coming from people. We don't want it to come from the party. So if we do a protest and it's brown, oh, DNC protest, it's right away the press going to say partisan. But if I'm in there coordinating with all the groups on the ground and sort of playing field general, but they're the ones talking to the cameras, it, it, then it's actually people. But if we send out press advisories with DNC on them and, and put in campaign, it just it doesn't have the same effect. We have to be really careful um, because, because what we don't need is for it to show up on CNN that the DNC paid for X people to, that's not going to happen. Zulema Rodriguez and Aaron Black are bragging about a protest last March that turned extremely violent and led the Trump campaign to cancel a huge rally. Fights broke out between protesters and Trump supporters, and two Chicago police officers were injured. Based on our reporting, the event was not spontaneous. We have a call with the This is exactly what goes in and behind the scenes there uh, for the DNC, for Hillary Clinton's uh, campaign. Uh, you know, I, I cannot help but believe that there's probably the, these type of things that probably go on on both sides, but we don't have any evidence on that part there. Like I said, other than what we see where you'll have it to wear the, uh, the T-shirts that, uh, um, that were made up uh, for Bill Clinton as rapists, that they'll wear those shirts around as well that Alex Jones made very popular there. Uh, nonetheless, it's, these things are done to agitate, to get things going, to get people protesting, to get people, in the case here, they, they were boasting about uh, causing uh, this riot that broke out back in March there, that Trump had to cancel the rally because of that. I, I don't think in any election anywhere in the past have we ever seen such an unprecedented amount of uh, insanity that is going on. And this type of reaction, if nothing else, uh, especially the violence that is taking place, trying, as, as the one man said there, they're trying to get them, he want, you know, we want them to reach out to punch us. Uh, they're wanting to start riots. Uh, that's exactly what's going on. And that's what's appalling. This is what could send the nation into a tailspin. And of course, it would play right into the hands of President Barack Obama right now and declaring martial law as a result. So it's very serious indeed what's happening. Can we actually expect a fair election to come? I highly doubt it. And do you think CNN will ever actually cover this information here that's been leaked out to the world? Well, according to what I understand about this young man here that uh, pulled this all off and, and publicizes here, YouTube is wanting to shut down his account as a result of publishing this information. So... Who knows? I think it's something that should be brought out to the public. It should be hitting CNN. It should be hitting Fox News and all the rest of the main networks. In fact, RT should be covering this report right now because with all the uh, backlash that they're doing with RT by basically boycotting RT, uh, cutting off their funds in Britain. I mean, we're going in tonight about a message about the mark of the beast, mainly because from a prophetic standpoint, when you look at that, can't buy or sell saving you take the mark. 
I guess it means you can't buy or sell unless you go along with the New World Order. Very interesting uh, thought to think about tonight, sure enough. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Good evening. We'll be talking to you again in just a little while. Shalom.